Well, you know, we've had one of those days. All right. Well, let's talk about the uh, new edition of the Wrestling Observer News that are right here. And uh, obviously one of the big stories that, uh, man, we talked about this Wednesday and what a reaction we got from people. This mm-hmm. uh, the story of uh, Warner and, you know, dropping some scripted programming. What does this mean for AEW? What does it not mean? And the answer is we don't know. But uh, conceivably, it could, it, this could, could be bad news. 12, it can go 12 different ways. Yes. Now, one thing that I, I do want to ask you about is, uh, and, and this is another thing that we don't know, but I believe when I watch, when I watch AEW, uh, this to me would fall into the sports category, even though it's not an actual sport, more than it would a, a scripted uh, program, a, a drama or whatever. It feels it's, clo- it's, clo- it's closer to sport than it's closer to sport than scripted drama. Yes, and it's going to largely depend on what the people that are making these decisions how they want to to qualify. Because of course, as we're well aware, when WWE needs to be sport, they push themselves as sport, and when they need themselves to be entertainment, they push themselves as entertainment. I would say that at this point, AEW needs to push themselves as sport. Well, they have, they they have, they have, and it's wavered kind of back and forth, like. It's weird because on TNT it was considered sport, and on TBS it was considered entertainment, and I and that's the same exact show, Dynamite, and I could not give you an answer as to why. So is uh, is Dynamite considered uh, entertainment, and Rampage is considered sport at this moment, since uh, one of them is on TNT? Um, that varies. <laughs> There's no exact thing, um, so you know it's um, it varies. I mean. In theory, they're all sport, but um, they, there was a distinction changed between TNT and TBS. I don't know why. Dave, when it comes to HBO Max, it's going to be merged with Discovery Plus, and that obviously means a lot more hours that are packed on to Max and a lot more windows for people to look at when it pops up there. Uh, just obviously it's way too early in the game and AEW doesn't even have a, a fixed streaming service, but do you think something like that would be a benefit for AEW to latch on to, or is it better to maybe try to start something on their own so they just don't go in there and get lost in the mix? Um, I mean, it all depends on the economic deal. I mean, if they get a, an economic deal that they feel would make them more money, or even the same money, I would go on HBO Max because the more the more roots you have with the company, um, the more they need to keep you. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like yeah. it's, it, you don't. You know, the one good thing that they have is they're doing their pay per views through through Bleach Report, which is part of the company, and it makes Bleach Report a lot of money every quarter. I mean, it's not a small amount of money at all, and so. You know, all of those things are very beneficial to AEW when somebody else is looking over and trying to decide, like, okay, what's worth happening? And it's like, this is more than a TV show to us. It's it's a streaming property that's popular. If it if it becomes a streaming popular, a property that's popular, and it's a pay per view uh, thing for us in a in a field of pay per view where you know there isn't a lot left. So. Um, you know that that's that all, all of that stuff would be beneficial, but you know, yeah, of course, everything's nobody really knows what's going to happen next, except for I mean, even the people I think in charge don't know because I don't think they've sat down and looked over everything, you know, to, in that detail to decide what they're going to do. You know, um, there's been talk for a long time now because every time there's a new WWE deal and and you look at Raw's numbers as compared to two years, five years. There, there's always the people who go, oh, they'll they'll never get a big increase, and they always get a big increase. Well, look at the NHL. Well, yes, and but my my point is this: so there has been a big change in the last couple of days, actually, as it uh, as it pertains to the perception of of streaming. Uh, Netflix has crashed, and CNN Plus has gotten axed, and when streaming first began. You know, there were a lot of people that started to sign up for different streaming services. And then, you know, the next thing you know, there's like 5,000 streaming services. And right. if you want to sign up for all of these different services, I mean, you are actually, depending on what you want, you may have just been better off with cable. Because you time to death. you're being asked for this and this and this and this and this. So it seems like we have momentarily, and I don't know where it's going to go in, you know, in yeah, the yeah, future, yeah, yeah. but we've hit a ceiling here. 
we're, so, we're, we're correcting the course, so to speak. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which which really makes me start to think about some of these these deals that have been signed, uh, not just for streaming, but for television, with the idea that, you know, we're signing you to this television deal, but it'll also be content for streaming. Now streaming has hit the ceiling. So we're actually in a, in a very weird place right now where, you know, everybody was all excited about HBO Max and AEW and and you know, these various deals, and I don't know what this is all going to mean. I mean, my point is, I think that this idea that everything is going to go up and up and up, we hit a ceiling, and, you know, a year from now, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe people are going to start migrating back to just cable because it's cheaper than having to buy all of these streaming services. We are in a really weird position, you know, because I was like, I, I always like to say that I try to be five years ahead, you know, now I don't even think you can be two years ahead because, you know, like before, yeah, you kind of knew fixed where everything's going. And now things change so rapidly. And, you know, yeah, you, I mean, you don't know where the media landscape's going to be in two years, let alone five years. And so everything is really everything speculative right now. Um, you know, you don't I mean, is cable going to slowly die off or is is it at the level that it is? And now, you know, it's going to stabilize. Um, is streaming going to – is this a momentary blip just for Netflix, so to speak? But will – you know, just because there's some competition for Netflix when they were the only game in town? Or is it is it a sign that, you know, of streaming? And, and we don't know, and we're not – you know, these things are going to take years to kind of shake up. So, um, yeah. Um, so AEW is there. I mean, they're in good shape in theory. They're a growing company, and that's good. Um, in a field like, you know, as far as the television goes, where most things are going down and they're going up. So that's a positive. Um, it's a big positive, actually. Um, but, you know, it's there's just so many unknowns that you just nothing's for sure. That's for yeah, sure. I guess yeah. one theory is, I mean, with with so many of these places hemorrhaging money because they bought so much original programming, it may be a better idea to try to partner up with somebody who is obviously AEW going to keep the rights for all of their things, and it could be more beneficial that way, and there would be more interest that way. I keep thinking that's going to happen at some point with the NFL, you know, melding more things in because they made Sunday Ticket and things like that, and it's tough, you know, with everything changing. You know, I think that's where Amazon could kind of slip in and, and actually. I guess they're doing it with football this year, where it's maybe better to partner up with an AEW than it is to try to outright buy all this other content that they're losing so much money on. Well, I mean, the one thing with, the one thing with AEW is you could probably make some pretty good deals for it now because it's still in its infancy, so to speak. And it, it appears it's got, you know, some longevity. I mean, everybody who thought it was like the splash in the pan, it was going to crash in six months. I mean, that was definitely proven wrong. And... So now they're like what I would call a pretty solid, you know, thing that has a lot of deals that, that could be made. So, you know, in that sense, they're in a good position. But, you know, like everything's changing. Who knows? You know, it may, you know, maybe they got in too late. Maybe, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Maybe it would have been better to make those deals a month ago. Maybe it's going to be better to make those deals a month from now. Who knows? Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, the... We don't know what the future will hold, but there are things we can learn from the past, and that is that, you know, Satnam Singh debuted, and there are international television markets. AEW is, I think everybody would agree, if you look at the ticket prices, I mean, they're probably underpricing their tickets to live events. I mean, there uh, are other ways to try to generate additional revenue if something happens and they can only get a similar TV deal as to what they're getting now. Well, they will increase in revenue in other ways between, you know, whether it's video game or, um, you know, you know, you know, there, there are different revenue streams that will increase revenue. But the TV deal is still the biggest story. You know, the biggest story in wrestling over the next two years is going to be the size of this TV deal because it's going to determine exactly how much competition there is, you know, at the top and, and the salaries of all the wrestlers and everything will all be determined in a roundabout way, buy this next television deal. So, um, um, but yeah, they if they're let's just say their revenue is eighty five million dollars this year, which is which is probably pretty close. Um, you know, even even with the, with the TV deal, if it stays the same, that revenue number will probably grow. You know, just between 
um, yeah, you know, you can, you know, the the, the um, grosses seem to get a little bit higher. The pay per view seem to get a little bit higher. There's probably going to be more merchandising deals that get made, things like that, you know, with outside sources as the company gets more and more famous, so to speak. So yeah, that, but the big jump, you know, and there'll be international TV deals too that will come in and that will help. But still, the big deal is the U.S. deal. And I think obviously over the next five years, the uh, three big stories are going to be AW's deal. WWE's next deal, and when the Peacock deal comes due, because that was a deal that that Peacock way overpaid for. Way overpaid, yeah. And uh, you know, with with the way that things went this week, and granted, we're four years away, but uh, that will well, be that an does. interesting potential renewal as well, or whatever happens. It gives yeah. Fo- yeah. Fox a chance to kind of – Tubi's been spending a lot of money. That could dull for right now, and I could see them being in the market for, for WWE's content big time if they last. So yeah, all of this – oh, the, 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 the one thing with WWE is, is because of the big brand name, there is always going to be interest in WWE, and, and the key to AEW is to build its brand name up to where it's at least close or similar – to WWE. To yes. Well, we actually have David to break. I want to thank you so much, Dave. We'll plug the Observer when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Come. New Observer. You can read all about it. WrestlingObserver.com. Your subscription gets you all of these audio shows in podcast form. And a New Observer every week. 35, 40,000. 40,000 words. Bro, if you read The Old Man in the Sea, I'm not sure that's 40,000 words. Every week there's a New Observer with all of the... Uh, all of the latest news. When you wake up Friday, there's all these this wrestling news online. It's all from The Observer. May as well just read The Observer. So that's up there for subscribers. You can also grab a print copy. P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. Send him some cash. He'll send you some issues. P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. I don't know why I remember some things and not others. Like, I can't remember Sophia Cromwell's name, even though I just did. But I remember that damn address for the Observer. Well, it's they'll, been they'll, a part of your life for how long? They'll dig me up to, 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 to reanimate me a thousand years from now. And the first thing I'll say is, P.O. Box 1228. Gamble, California, 95009. I don't think the phone number's changed either. No. In fact, it hasn't it changed. It actually has changed a little bit. It hasn't changed in probably 25 years, but... <laughs> It has, uh, he used to have another number. He used to have a 900 number. I was on it. Making that, making that cheddar. No offense to anyone named Bert. But when you spell it with a U, it's much worse. Vinny, you got to go to NXT and your name is Bert, okay? You can either spell it B-E-R-T or B-U-R-T. You're going to look at both of those you're going to go, B for sure. Yeah. Right, Craig? Craig knows. Yeah, because like, it's like, I drank so much I Bert. You know? (laughs) What? First it was Narcissus. Okay. But then later it changed to the Narcissist. Yes. With a T. Yes. But that wasn't Narcissist. That was the Narcissist. The Narcissist. No! The Narcissist. Who cares? Bert. Yeah. yeah. Bert Narcissist. <laughs> Bert, like Bert. Bert. I'm sorry. I need to recover from Bert Narcissist. <laughs> He's such a narcissist. He kept the name Bert. <laughs> yeah. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.